Hello everyone, this is another update on the Flux image generation workflow. Last week, there are updates from the Comfy UI team, which provides a simpler way to implement Flux into Comfy UI. You can now download the FP8 checkpoint versions of these AI model files, which are typically located in the checkpoint subfolder within your models folder. This is a trimmed down version of the Flux developer versions of FP16 compressing everything from the clip text models and UNet models into one checkpoint file, resulting in a 17 gigabyte file size that you'll need to download. Once you've downloaded this, save it into the Comfy UI models folder, specifically the checkpoints folder. This is similar to what we usually do when saving checkpoints for Stable Diffusion 1.5 or SDXL. We also need to ensure that the CFG in the Sampling Steps custom nodes is set to 1 and then we're ready to go. So, why are we using the FP8 checkpoint versions? I've created some workflows and over the weekend, I produced more AI videos like short stories, continuing the horror stories I created previously. These ongoing stories use Flux AI and Kling AI to generate videos. When using Flux AI, I'm actually using these FP8 developer versions of Flux checkpoint model files to create all the AI video scenery from images. Starting from each scene, I created images of the characters, story backgrounds, goals, dark spirits, or scenes capturing girls in the woods, etc. All of these were created using the Flux developer FP8 checkpoint models. We also have an update on the Flux Realism LoRa models that we've seen on Hugging Face. You can download this if you haven't noticed that Flux now has its first LoRa models created by Xlabs AI. This works with the Flux developer models and produces photorealistic image styles. I'm using this in this workflow as well. Here, we have the Flux developer version's FP8 checkpoint models. As you can see, it's loaded in checkpoints, which will be located in the checkpoint folder. We also have the LoRa models for the Flux Realism LoRa. After that, I'm setting the aspect ratios using the SDXL landscape ratios. This is slightly different from the previous Flux workflow. In previous videos, we've discussed Flux AI and using SDXL for refining and upscaling. You can click on the link below to see these videos. That workflow used the dual clip loader to load the FP16 Flux versions, whereas this time it's different. If we're using the checkpoint models, it's very similar to how we usually connect with Stable Diffusion and SDXL text-to-image workflows. We're using the checkpoint, LoRa models, and we're using the clip text. Here's the negative clip text, which we leave empty. We don't need clip text negative for Flux models. We're only required to type some text for the positive clip text. Then set your batch size right here. We can set multiple images for each batch size, but I recommend not too many. Usually I just set one or two images. That's all for each cue prompt in the workflow. And right here, as we can see, is a very familiar sampler. Note that it's, of course, the K sampler. We're going to set the CFG as mentioned. We're using 0.1 in the CFG, and for steps, we can use 20, 25, 30, whatever you like to use for the step numbers. One of the differences compared to SDXL and SD 1.5 is that we're using the flux guidance to connect the positive conditions, which is coming from the positive text prompt. Custom notes are creating such conditions here, and once we have one or two images, usually that's how many I generate, it will show here as a preview. I use image sharpening that comes by default in Comfy UI. Just set it, you know, by default values, one for the sharpening radius, and bring that image to the image list. And here I've used the detailers, the segmentation detailer for enhancing the person, and I exclude the hand because I don't need to refine the hand mostly for the flux image. So just refine the person if necessary to get rid of the artifacts, skin, or the plastic texture styles of the character. Then I can use the segmentations and use SDXL checkpoint models to refine the character as a whole image segment region. And once it's done, we'll bring it to the upscaler and upscale the image for the final result and save that in our output folder. So this is again the save image extends. I can predefine your file names. 
the time and date that it's going to make the files, you need file names, and also I can set my own folder's name. So here I'm using the Calling Act 3. This is what I just did last weekend on Twitter. These AI short stories, AI videos, and that's how I create each scene and then bring it to Kling AI. Right here, I'm using the international version of Kling AI this time. As you can see, I've uploaded tons of image scenes that I created with the Flux workflow right here and brought them to Kling AI. And, you know, just generate each image and test it out without the prompts. And, and some of that is with the prompts. For example, this one is just a very simple prompt. Two girls talking seriously, having conversations like that. Just want to make things more interactive between the characters because I saw lots of AI videos on Twitter and TikTok. There are a lot of very static AI videos where the characters look very robotic without any interactions or talking and things like that. So I tried to make this more conversational in style for the AI characters and add some emotions going on. And you know, they are answering the phone. The haunt spirit is calling this main character and then they are going out to the woods and finding their friends. This is the whole story scene of what we've done so far. And you know, like this one, this is a fail. The first two seconds, there's this different style, and then it starts changing back to what I expect, the clothing outfit style of the character. So there's a lot of testing and trial and error for making one AI image into AI videos. The result, like this one, took me about one afternoon to make this AI image into AI video story. And this AI video, it took about 2 minutes, 19 seconds. That's the maximum length Twitter can do. So I just do 2 minutes, 19 seconds as a short video format for Twitter. And that's how I did it. And as you can see right here, this is the kind of text prompt format that I'm using. So for the AI characters, like I've shown in previous videos, I'm using, you know, the chatbot. You can use Llama 3. Or if you like to use ChatGPT, you can use ChatGPT as well. Uh, create your stories and also create your character styles and backgrounds as well for each character. And then you will have the format of your character right here. So every time your scenes are going to generate with that character. For example, here, this is Gina. And I will paste my character descriptions below my text prompts of the event locations. What do the characters do in the beginning of this text prompt? And then I will put the character descriptions at the end of here. So this is a format that I've already saved in document files. Once you have this, you can just click generate and it will start creating image scenes for this text prompt. But this workflow can run faster, I'd say faster than the Flux Developer FP16. It requires less memory consumption. I feel it's smoother overall in the whole generation process from the case sampler to bringing it to sdxl for upscaling it requires less vrm and the system is able to generate up to four images per batch but i usually just generate one or two because i have a very well-defined text prompt for each character sometimes it's not able to generate the realism styles that's why i generate two images each time so i've got an a and b choice here I can pick either one for my image, like this one, I can use this image if I have to choose from these two, and it will do a refiner here again. Lastly, we will have an upscaler from this part. It's a simpler process for the Flux models. Bringing it to SDXL is a very simple way to generate images, but then we're using Flux because it has very good prompt following instructions. We can create multiple objects in one image and it's able to follow up with the whole text prompt that I have even if I've got two characters. Let's bring up one example like this one. I have another text prompt. The two characters are going into the woods at this moment and we have to generate an image for those actions and the woods are kind of feeling dark and, you know, kind of scary. This is actually coming from the document that I have from ChatGPT and this is just one example. You don't have to follow exactly the same scene descriptions in here, but just use your creativity. I have also defined two characters here. Again, I've already saved this text prompt that defines the character, how she looks, what kind of body shape, etc. for each character. Although it's not going to be always the same, clothing styles and faces are sometimes a little different. But we can refine those using face swap or in-paint techniques. 
which I'll talk about in other videos in the future. First, we're going step by step on how we develop the AI video generation using Flux to create each scene. Then later on, we'll have another tutorial about how we can edit those image scenes and make them better with more consistent characters and fixed faces, etc. And here, we have two new results. As you can see, this one looks more like what I've defined in the text prompt, because the girl Gina, she likes green color with some goldish rings for her accessories, etc. And yeah, this one looks better as the result. And this is the main character, which is Megan. It also looks very similar to the text prompt as well. But then one thing, sometimes the clothing is not always the same. In the next tutorial, we'll go through how we can fix that. So yeah, that will be in the next video. But right now, this time we're doing step by step from the foundations of the flux checkpoint models to generate an image. If we get some artifact skins and bad looking characters, we can do a little detailing, not too much. I usually set that to 0.25 to 0.3 in the denoise settings for the segmentation detailer. Then we have something more natural looking, not too many changes, but the skins are not going to look too plastic on the character. Then lastly, we bring that to the upscaler to make it better. So basically, this is just what we've generated during this tutorial video, just one of the demos showing how it will become one of the image scenes in the AI videos. So just like this kind of thing, sometimes the face is moving and the clothing styles are different. Yes, that will happen. We'll see how we can fix that in the next video tutorial that will be coming up next. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Hope this inspires you guys. If you guys have some ideas and want to create AI movies, videos, AI music videos, yeah, this is a pretty good solution using Flux to create kind of realistic style images and bring them to AI videos and do something like that. So hope this inspired you guys. I'll see you in the next video and have a nice day. See ya.